This is probably my favorite role in Final Fantasy XIV, and that is the magical range DPS role. I have always loved casters in every Final Fantasy game, and Final Fantasy XIV is no different. Hopefully in this video I can give you enough information in order for you to determine if Black Mage, Red Mage, or Summoner is your next job. Make sure to watch this video in its entirety and hit that like button down below in order to show your support for the channel. The first magical DPS we're going to talk about is Black Mage. Jokes aside, being the director of the game's main job, you can tell that there's a lot of love put here. It is so well thought out and with Endwalker only got monumentally better. Black Mage's job specific abilities is Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Essentially, with Black Mage, you're rotating between a fire phase and an ice phase, where in the fire phase, you're outputting tremendous amount of damage, while in your ice phase, you're recovering your MP, applying dots, and getting ready for your fire phase again. Now before, there was a little bit of a hiccup at lower levels that made Black Mage feel kind of clunky, but that has since been smoothed out with the new expansion. They basically made Aspect Mastery a level 1 trait to which you are in Umbral Ice and want to switch to Astral Fire will cost no MP and vice versa. Not only this, but you get the foundational rotation almost completely by level 35 by allowing 3 stacks of either. Black Mage is still a powerhouse and a lot of the immobility was fixed when they added in a second triple cast, which essentially allows you to cast 3 spells instantly, which is super great for mobility. The job still feels really powerful and is even more streamlined than before with longer proc timers for your damage over time thunder and your fire proc. We also have our new ability Paradox, which replaces Fire 1 at later levels, which resets your timer of Astral Fire during that phase. Honestly, if every job got as much love and attention Black Mage does, then we'd probably be in a very different position with our job roles. This is my main job that I take through every main story quest. The only advice I can give that really helped me was melding some materia for spell speed to really help get your rotation smoothed out. You can simply just go on the balance discord and look what the recommended spell speed is for that tier. Even if you don't meld critical hit, direct hit, or determination, melded spell speed really is a game changer for the rotation. This is still a greedy job as there are no buffs for other players, you're basically just solely focused on your rotation alone, and I don't think it's too difficult, you just gotta get used to the timing. The difficult part comes in knowing when you're able to move and cast in order to maximize DPS as it's still a very stationary job. Nothing has truly changed for Black Mage, only improved upon for Endwalker. If you want to be a powerful nuke while solely focusing on your rotation and damage uptime, then Black Mage is for you. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite caster DPS of Final Fantasy's Endwalker. Let's move on to Red Mage. Right up front, Red Mage superficially doesn't look like it had many changes, but I think that this is the underdog of the magical range DPS. Red Mage's job abilities is dual cast and white and black mana. Essentially, you're casting Jolt, which then procs dual cast, which allows your next ability to be instant cast. You then can cast Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder, to which these abilities can proc Ver Fire and Ver Stone, which just basically replace Jolt. All of these GCDs give you white or black mana or a little bit of both. Basically, your goal is to get to 50 white and black mana in order to release your burst Zoro attack and your super cool red mage high tier spells. Now, the biggest change that came with Endwalker is that Manification will instantly give you 50 black and white mana. Before, it just doubled whatever you had. Now, what it does is allow you to have a burst window at the very beginning of the fight, which will greatly increase your DPS. And honestly, that's red mage in a nutshell. The mobility is top tier as you can move in between your dual cast abilities allowing you to keep your DPS uptime. And really, you only have two OG CDs to cast in between all this. Once you figure out the perfect setup of abilities on your hotbar or cross hotbar, this becomes very intuitive really quickly. I find it's a little harder on cross hotbar to figure out placement, so you'll have to play around with it for a little bit until you find a good combination. And placement. 
I feel like Red Mage did not get enough attention, and I honestly find it an easier and more rewarding class than both Black Mage and Summoner. If mobility is super, super important to you, then I think Red Mage will be your favorite job out of the three. Summoner has a lot of mobility in certain DPS times, but I still think Red Mage takes the cake. When I play this job casually, I find myself in the middle to top tier of DPS for the entire party, and I'm not even a Red Mage main, so I still have mess ups here and there. If this wasn't enough for you, the godly ability of rezzing other teammates and having a semi-decent cure ability is pretty broken if you ask me. You even have a damage buff for the party, so it really is an all-around caster. If you want the benefits of DPS, resurrection, mobility, then Red Mage is for you. What also might be for you is joining my community discord using the link tree in the description box to join. Sick transition. Last but certainly not least is the infamous Summoner. Now going into Summoner, I already had my thoughts since so many people were dissecting it for Endwalker. It has had a complete work through. Now, I know this might not be a popular opinion, but I actually like the flow of Summoner in Shadowbringers rather than the current one in Endwalker. Summoner's new job abilities are, well, summons, where you go from Bahamut to three primal summonings of Titan, Garuda, and Ifrit, back to your Phoenix summon, and then back to the primals in basically a circle just like that. The goal is to get your two main summons to do a ton of damage. Work through your primals by using every ability before moving on. Now, there isn't a super tight rotation, but generally Titan seems to be the preferred summon to start with after your first Bahamut phase. Another thing to take note is that Titan and Garuda allow you to move around a little bit and have a, a decent amount of mobility, while when you summon Ifrit, you're pretty stationary, so you want to be mindful of that during battle. It does feel a little washed out for my taste. I'm sure there's optimizing potential, and to be able to summon all the primals in a flashy way is pretty sick, which is why I still keep playing with it. But if someone who doesn't main summoner and only practice for 5 minutes before jumping into a trial and be 4th or lower on the aggro list, it kind of says it all. It's a very easy class to comprehend now. The main problem with summoner, which might come as a shock, is the actions and traits menu. There is just so much going on here and it took me 20 minutes alone to figure out what abilities are separate which ones upgrade to new abilities, and which abilities replace each other. It's kind of a mess here, and the only advice I can give, even though it's really unconventional, is to just put every single ability on the hotbar and then delete which ones are the same. Believe me, reading the abilities did not help at all all because the traits menu is also pretty extensive so that's why i opted for just the manual placement and deleting until i got everything on the hotbar i love the rotation and the idea of summoner i'm just a little bummed that they got rid of the damage over times and it was not worked into the summons but instead removed if you are new to final fantasy 14 and want to try a caster job that is not very difficult to optimize then summoner probably is the right choice for you it's still a powerful job but in some weird way, it feels less powerful than the previous summoner to me. Comment down below on your thoughts of the summoner job. I hope that this might help you understand a little more about each job and its job abilities to see which one might vibe with you more. Make sure to limit break through that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to get notified of all my future guides for Endwalker. I want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters as if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to put out continued content like I do. I also have some new YouTube shorts about minions on my channel that are meant to be cute, fun ways to connect with you guys more, so go check them out and let me know what you think. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy videos, then you can click here.